this is the last session of Women Matters, and we wanted to give, uh, how do you say, a look back on this past year, which we had envisioned at the beginning of this year in January, and wanted to check if the things we wanted to have accomplished or have happened at the end of the year, if that has happened or not. And so, uh, Monia, would you like to tell us a little bit what you heard in re-listening to what we did? Yeah, well, I'm Monia, I'm in Vienna, Austria. We have winter now, but a mild winter. So it's just feeding the birds and the squirrels and uh, which was something I envisioned for all this year <laughs> and which we did. And they, I guess it's already the next generation of wild animals because they, are, they don't come close, but they wait for, the, for whatever we, for the nuts in particular. So um, it's amazing that this year, happened to me quite unexpected and <clears throat> I could have uh, envisioned that getting 80 would be some kind of uh, Zanja, some, some kind of barrier. <clears throat> and amazingly enough, uh, I left so many things behind. I just, some of them I didn't leave voluntarily, uh, but others I was glad just to let go. And it was in particular all my official uh, roles in the integral scene. Uh, and I finally noticed that uh, I really wanted the next generation to take over. So I withdrew and all the wailing and all the sorrow didn't get me back uh, because they get used to it. And the only thing I really wanted to continue is meeting women and uh, meeting you and the international women and yeah this was unexpected and unexpected in particular was uh, that some men feel when they turn 72 they get old because my husband is now 80 and he doesn't but he, he moves like an old man but he in what he is still very uh, vigorous and this was something, this was really a barrier to cross, hard to cross. And, but now I find that there is, I can, I can, uh, I don't want to say produce, but I can experience uh, joy and, ecstasy uh, just by my own means in particular the, uh, the the breathing exercises we do at the Jungbrunnen uh, every week with good dancing and I really I get into unexpected uh, states uh, but I'm getting used to it and it's a kind of yeah, I'm satisfied not to be dependent on other people in this. Of course, when you think of it, how many people are involved when we meet on Zoom for these exercises? It's, it's uh, yeah, it's, it really gets you dizzy if you think of all the electricity and all the music and all the, uh, the cameras. And still it's, yeah, it's, I'm very grateful that we live now in 2021 and have all this available. 
Um, so I'm at the end of this year. Uh, I'm going into this new project I did to relaxing into suchness uh, and uh, trying to envision what where this would be like after death. Because if I don't do it now, when will I do it? <laughs> and I found many, many, many teachers who really guided me by book in books. Um, I didn't know I had that many books on this subject already, but now I'm just trying to read up and it's, yeah, it's very gratifying and so at the end of the year, I'm quite relaxed into suchness. Let's put it this way. And uh, yeah, and the pandemic sort of passes us by. And yeah, that's convenient too. Yeah, that's so far my looking back on 2021 and I'm interested I'm very interested how you how you are were experiencing this year oh there is Victoria and okay so I pass on to Gertrude well, thank you um Actually, the year, I think that year, my niece was about to be born. <laughs> yeah, we, we heard that um, there were some health issues. And so a year later, it's like, uh, yeah, she's almost a year now. It's incredible. And I just got in, got in um, video. My brother is the <laughs> happiest father on earth. And I got some videos where she was in um, Danish. So they moved to Denmark and that they were in a Danish uh, folk dance group. And she's sitting in the middle and like... <laughs> The whole body moving. So, so I got a niece that I didn't see yet because I was not vaccinated. And yeah. Um, the person I was talking about with the health issues, it's, it's ongoing. So it's a stable, steady thing. It didn't really improve, but they say you not come every three months, but in half a year so so it's steady enough that it's hopeful and i did a healer's training i did the emotion code training <laughs> a lot with joe dispensa really to support me being there also for him and um, then all of a sudden there's some like coaching coming in, a uh, new project. Uh, I'm working with a company to transform them complete. I mean, the whole company is 40 people with an appreciative inquiry process. So um, it was a lot of stress and it was not so easy in the team. But now I'm, I really looking forward to to next year where we do the second part of the of the process so and today i decided i called the broker and said yes we take the offer of a specific person so it i told you that we want to sell a house and find <laughs> it, it's 
yeah, it's not done yet, but I said yes. And it was like, oh my God. So I've never seen so much money on one, like, so it was a little bit overwhelming to, to make that decision. So it's like, could we have more? Is it right to make that decision? So um, next year, it will be money-wise, it will be a lot easier. So we didn't <laughs> crack the million. Um, and yeah, there are a lot of new avenues. So the, the project was for half year um, course that started just in 2nd of December. So this is going to be something. And I forgot, I did the, the Squid Flow uh, training. So you had a taste with ACO and I did some of the facilitation, but this is almost finished and half a year. So, but this was the most intense um, experience also the most like what did you say relax into suchness like coming from not knowing and yeah coming from there to to let actions emerge that happiest dreams emerge not not from already knowing and and a lot of support to support each other and this is a whole collective of maybe 30, 20 people that you can 24 7 you can ask for support so that's that's really an amazing bunch of people and yeah it's it's an integral training so it's it's really located in the integral world even more more towards turquoise than teal and i'm really really happy to to have done this decision yeah so i'm and my girls come now <laughs> One is already here, the other one is coming. And we might, we might um, visit the other one in Austria, but I don't know what the government tells us to do. <laughs> so it's yeah, been a very full year, I would say. We have lost Hanali in South Africa. Oh. Hope she will come back. Uh, she yeah. said also last time that they had um, energy problems, so it might have happened again. I'm okay. sad about okay. that because it's a while that we didn't hear her. But we have the youngest of us, Beatrice. Yeah, I would like go. to so. hand over to you. Yeah. And I'm here double because of the connection. Yeah. Okay, so I want to make sure to not lose you. Are we we're reporting from the year slash checking in or what is the sorry to be late I, I went to dance class this morning and the trains were very delayed on the way back so and maybe I can add that I'm Gertraud from Germany <laughs> sorry I didn't I just jumped in yeah well I'm Beatrice from New York <laughs> um so let's see I I Last night before I went to bed, I scrolled through um, the videos from last year. Um, it was very interesting to hear myself talk. <laughs> Sometimes I kind of drone. I was very, I wasn't very happy about that. Um, <laughs> um, but it was interesting to see what um, 
yeah, the kind of energy I was bringing into this year when it started and also what I was visioning for. And um, my vision was that my mother and I would spend our first Christmas here in New York. I'd forgotten that that was what I thought. And, and it's interesting because we got really close to making that happen and then we changed our mind. But we are getting to spend Christmas together this year <laughs> again, which is great. And because uh, last year was a digital digital celebration. Um, so I guess that part, that prediction came true. Um, and I, and I, in January, I think I was saying that I really wanted to enter in the year gently and to try to establish some habits and to not put too much pressure on myself and to kind of see where things went. And I also said that, um, just lost my train of thought. Um, <laughs> We'll come back to that. Oh, that I envisioned this year as a, as a year of, of growth. Um, and cause it's, it was the, you know, this was the first year really that I was entire year that I was out of school, not in a full-time job, um, kind of on my own in a way, kind of forging out into an unknown, unknown path and unknown world. And then also the entire world has been unknown. So, you know, triple unknown, um, and I think that's exactly what this year has been. It's been a year of growth. Um, I've learned a lot about my big, my big uh, learning has been about boundary setting and about time management and about self-care and self-love and, and also like trust that things will come together and that there's a plan and there's yeah, I don't know that there's a path. There's even there's a path even if I don't see it. And, and that every choice I make is taking a step on that path. And that sometimes it's not a question of right or wrong choices. It's just a question of, of making a choice and stepping forward. Um, yeah, I imagined that I would, uh, great things would happen with the nonprofit and we'd be looking forward to a new year of even greater things. And that's, did not pan out the way that I expected it to, but it did. That did happen in another way. Um, we we had a beautiful exhibition in April. We've done a number of performances together. Um, I got hired on to work for another, you know, partner organization over the course of the year. Um, and and next year we're moving into a new gallery space, and we have big plans for what's next. And and it's so that actually happened. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't know. It was, it was really interesting to hear myself talk about this potential new year. Um, it, and, and hearing myself talk about it, I, I kind of remember what my vision was and it did not turn out that vision, but the words that I said <laughs> about growth and nonprofit progress and, um, all of that, those came true just in different ways. So, um, yeah. I did a lot this year. I've I've been freelancing the entire year and I've managed to survive in New York, even though it's incredibly expensive. I the biggest thing, let us not forget, <laughs> was going to Austria for the first time hmm. in um in 16 years. Is that right? Yeah. Got to see some of you in in person and um that was incredibly significant and a very deep experience. And I still have yet to really internalize everything that happened on that trip. Um, so that was the biggest thing, I think. Um, I don't know, I feel ready for the next year. I, it doesn't feel, it doesn't, this doesn't feel like a closing and a restarting. I kind of feel it just like it's a continuation because a lot of the things that I'm doing right now are just gonna keep going. Um, but next year I turn 30. Um, which maybe for all of you does not sound that dramatic, but for me is a big deal. Um, and I hope to, I hope to go back to Austria for my 30th birthday. That's, that's my hope. Um, I guess we're going to talk about our hopes for the year later. So um, yeah, I started dancing again. I don't know. I'm, I'm all over the place, but a lot of things happened this year. It's been a good year. It's been a hard year, but it's been a good year. A lot of death and a lot of laughter, not at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pass to my mother. I'm rambling. <laughs> um, 
I'm Victoria, California. Um, I didn't didn't have a chance to to review. Maybe maybe did you hear what I said last year, Beatrice? Or you only focused on what you said. Um, I I don't remember what I had planned, if anything. Um, but looking back on the year, I think what was significant was um, well, many things were significant, but probably. The, the the fact that I, I finally had the courage to perform um, concerts online, which I had never done before in my life. I've never even been willing to record anything. And the concerts were also recorded. So I had to take a big step to allow that because I'm such a perfectionist. Um, and they had, um, they were really, really well received as far as I know, if anybody didn't like them, they they had the courtesy not to let me know. Um, <laughs> but it, that was a big step for me because I've always been so perfectionistic and um, never been willing to make any recordings or in, do anything like that. And also just to be able to perform without um, getting energy back from the audience, which is sort of my whole mode of interacting with people is to have a kind of, a kind of rapport that energizes me and energizes them simultaneously. So that was a new thing. And um, I gave a lot of, I've, I've tripled the amount of lecturing that I do in the course of a year, a season. Um, I, I've already given, well, it's the end of the year now. So I gave, um, I think three, I presented three like a full lecture series this year. So that was a first for me, because usually I've, I only do one or two a year um so that was a lot and that was really that showed me that that's really my passion um i really love to lecture and and that wasn't as dramatic in terms of the audience because i was interacting with the artworks and so even when i give lectures live um i'm focused on the art more than i am on sort of interacting with the people so that didn't feel as, as strange. Um, and then the big thing that I did um, was to just binge, continue, continue my binge from 2020 on um, retreats and um, conferences and symposia and um, all kinds of meditation groups and um, courses on Buddhism and the different types of Buddhism. So that was, um, that took up a lot, most of my year, I'd say. And what, oh, here, good, here comes Hanali, I hope. Um, and just this weekend, sort of appropriately, I attended, hi, Hanali. Um, I'm gonna pass to you in a minute, so get ready. <laughs> keep, your, keep your connection. Um, yeah, just, just over this weekend, I attended a, a winter solstice weekend um, led by the two, um, my two major teachers since I've sort of started this exploration of um, mindfulness and Buddhism. And so that was really profound for me to realize um, that they're actually, I feel like I really know them well and they even know me, which is unusual considering we've never met in the flesh, but um, we've had, you know, interaction in various of their courses. I've asked questions and interacted with them. And I don't know, it gave me a really positive feeling that um, in spite of all the challenges of, of this current world situation, and it's also, of course, being here with you, that um, I've realized in this last year um, that my most important relationships are actually with people that I've never met face to face and in the flesh and um except for beatrice of course <laughs> um but all of you and and as i said with these teachers i've had in the past well since the pandemic started and and that was a really um profound feeling to realize that it's sort of also how interconnected we are anyway sort of globally and how we can um we can make a significant um, contribution to other people's lives, even without actually like 
meeting them face to face or um, in person that that so that everything we do can count and can have meaning so that that's a really big realization and, and to me very a very positive one because I think the events of the last you know year and a half or however long it's been since the pandemic started have you know the, the world seems to have sort of fallen apart but but what I've taken from my own experiences is that in spite of that there's been a lot of new building that that did not happen before and could not perhaps I mean it could have happened but but it didn't because people didn't feel the need like they did when they were isolated. So I think that's a really profound thing. And with that, I'm going to pass um, to South Africa. <laughs> and, and that in itself is miraculous, isn't it? That here I am in California and Hanali, you're in South Africa. So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so if my, the connection is a bit unstable tonight, um, we've had really interesting weather, which contributes to um, now our, our fiber and internet connections and the satellites that we receive uh, internet connection from as well. So if I disappear, then just uh, know that I'm here with you in, in the flesh and in spirit. And yes, it's been a very interesting year. Really, really interesting. Um, there were so many shifts for me that I'm very deeply grateful for and lots of healing as well at the same time. And to just give you a little view into that, I've always, as you might know, I've always wanted to come to Europe and the frustration of not being able to come and spending lots of time and energy on that. And then it's not possible because of what's happening in the world, but even before this. So it's also um, what happened to us specifically in South Africa in the last month was there was lots of anger, which is completely understandable. And you take our history of, our wings, we've always been treated like beggars in the rest of the world, Africa, like the stepchildren of the world. And people got really angry this time around. So that collective energy was really strong, which other people in other parts of the world take for granted. We really have to struggle for just to get visas and to travel. And so free for us, travel bans is nothing new because we've had that for a very long time. But it was very interesting what was happening because of all of that. Can you put it on that? Bring it on the still. There was really a shift for me personally to realize why is it that I want to be in other parts of the world? Why, why is it not okay to be here? And to spend so much energy and effort to get to other parts of the world is, doesn't even make sense, you know? So for me personally, it was a huge shift of maybe my soul is leading me to another part of the world, which I'm looking forward to discover whatever that might be. It doesn't mean it might not be Europe or the Northern Hemisphere, but it was such an incredible shift of what was happening collectively with us as well here on the Southern point of Africa and Africa. And yes, um, it was part of other shifts as well. And I think what was really for me, a surprise this year as well. I was really getting out of my social bubble. I was exploring in very different other, in other parts, in other, um, in other contexts that I didn't do before. And my eyes were just opened. And I'm really deeply grateful for you, woman. And I'll tell you why. <laughs> and I think you mentioned something about um, Monia last time when I couldn't attend because we didn't have internet, was that that resonance that we co-create here, and we don't do it deliberately, it just happens, is something that is really a treasure in this world currently. And that was what my year was about. It was about alignment, resonance, to really find and to explore and to go into other spaces to just feel what it feels like and to just come back to center every time to this type of space and to know this is where my nourishment lies and where also my expansion and growth lies. I'm deeply grateful for that. And what was personally happening for my, for my intention earlier this year, it really did happen, but in a very different way than I thought it would happen because a structure started to unfold that I would never imagine for my life's work to share with the world. And it, it was just a beautiful creative process as well at the same time. And also for having had already in April and March an opportunity to share, to experiment with some of the stuff with, groups of people that I also belong to. And there it was wonderful to see how women just trust. 
that they didn't, they had no idea where I was taking them on this journey of six weeks. And they just trusted. They didn't ask questions. And they went with it. And it was incredible. We came together every Monday and um, we spent some two hours together. And in the middle of it, they said to me, we don't know where this is even going. Why are we doing this? We have no idea, but we know there's something incredible here. And for me, it was once again, just beautiful how, yes, we can ask questions, but it's different. There's, there's an inner trust in life itself that women carries, I suppose, it's because of our physiology as well, but also of our, maybe our, the way our consciousness works and plays in the world. So that was really beautiful. So it was for me, I would almost say it's a breakthrough year of discovering that what I was so deeply searching for, I can get anywhere. So that sense of separation that I always felt and isolation started disappearing of, I must just be present to the moment. And that was really incredible. And also I've had um, one of my loved ones, I was going through a very traumatic separation with her partner and being there for her in the last five months was also something incredible. And um, also dealing with friends who passed from COVID. And another friend of mine is still in the hospital. She's got cancer and she's got COVID. So again, it was bringing mortality into it as well. Not my own perspective, because I, I don't fear death myself at all. But to be with my loved ones who is in that same environment, to be present with them, and to also deeply honor my own feelings. Because with my dearest friend, with her, it was before she had many times where we didn't know she was going to make it because of the cancer. And now with COVID, it was um, it was also honoring her soul's path, whatever her soul is choosing. Yes, we will grieve if something like that would happen in the future, what in everywhere her soul chooses, but it was just so incredible to be on both sides, to feel it in, in my body, um, and also to go with her through it because we're not in the same city. And then also to honor the the group of friends and family that's involved in the process and to just be present to that and to also this question in my mind of when we ask when we tell somebody else we wish them well is it our will or is it their soul's will so that question also came a lot up but what i really wanted to share with you tonight and i'm glad i could come back on the internet was on on the weekend on saturday night i attended chloe a good child's a session about um, it was a solstice um, celebration, and we were sounding in a new world through sounds. It was incredible. There was over a thousand people on the call, and it was just absolutely incredible. The collective energy, it was just pulling me out of all this trauma of the last year. And just to remind me that, you know, there's this collective field that carries us, and this is for me that. So thank you, ladies, for listening and for being here with me. And yes, I treasure you all. Thank you. I'm complete for now. Thank you, Anneli. I'm glad that you have found back your internet connection and came in. And I find very interesting what you say about this last thing, the solstice celebration. And afterwards, maybe you can tell us a little bit more how that was going and who is doing things like that and so on. Now to me, at the beginning of the year, I said I wanted to have a solution for my house in some way, for my living situation and so on. The whole year went quite, how can I say, strangely smooth and quickly. And um, up to May, I was more or less alone. And then people showed up, one after the other. A whole lot of people showed up. And it was amazing, many of them, which we, I really connected immediately with others less and they then disappeared and still we are somehow connected, but not really. And now I'm, it's, it's December, uh, October, three months, I am living here with a family with five children. That means four children, the, the, the fifth is uh, an adult. And I'm, I just listened with them the fourth part of the Weihnachtsoratorium, uh, the uh, Christmas Oratory of Bach. And 
I, I, I have them read uh, fairy tales and teaching them a little bit how to use the voice better and things like that, you know, and I want also to teach them a little bit of singing, but slowly, slowly, slowly. And I do Italian with them and I really enjoy to be uh, to be with them. Then there was a family, another family here for 10 days with very small children also. And that was really too much for me. I thought, no, that's 10 children around. That's uh, not what my, my future should look like. Um, so we have uh, founded an, uh, an association and hope that we can find funding for a school of a different way as we do now, for instance, like I do, no? for instance, my part, but uh, so uh, with the olive harvest, you know, they learn what olive is and what olive oil is and uh, so many things. Or when we got the pieces of wild pigs, both, uh, then they came and watched me cutting in pieces and I, they saw the ribs and they saw everything. I mean, these are ways to, to learn about biology, which in a book you cannot learn, you know, and they were very interested in all these things. So it's very satisfying to me that there is a way of teaching children, which is not so abstract, but can be a natural way. Yeah, and then uh, people arrived here from England and they want to create a um, um, living group of people over 50. And we saw a house nearby. It's really in walking distance from me. And we went there today and to, to see it. And I'm completely, um, you can say, in love with this project. And I would love to participate. And now we have to figure out how we connect this. Because the other thing I want to give away the responsibility for my huge house, which I'm so far was carrying alone. And I, no, I don't want to, to continue to do everything on my, you know, everything on my shoulders. So we are in the process of creating something together, which the main focus is of how can we live together in a way, how can we create community, real community, you know? How can we find a way to, to be together in a, in a way which is respectful and which is helping each other to grow? And so far it, it went quite well. Also, there were some horrible moments with my Italian guy here who, who had found um, a girlfriend. And in my opinion, she is psychically... So we had a really a difficult moments, like, you know, when a 30 year old woman behaves like a four year old, that begins to be a little bit difficult. But we went through this uh, thing and now it seems to be resolved, they are gone and other things will, will, will open. And I'm very trustful that this process will continue and that I will find the right people or maybe probably I still have some of them, the right people to be together with. And so, yeah, in some way I have fulfilled my, my year's duty of finding uh, a solution for my living situation and for my house. So looking forward to how, what next year will uh, unfold and what it will bring so far to my year, uh, yeah, past year. I'm wondering, uh, do you feel that you have changed in a certain way in this year? I do feel that I have learned much better to let go of things, you know, to to just let allow things to happen and interfere only when it's really important when I have to to set boundaries and things like that. But with many things which I was very perfectionistic before or very, let's say, things who were really dear to me and when then I see other people handling them in a way which I don't like so far it was really difficult but now i'm getting more you know 
patient and say, okay, when it's really bad, then I will interfere. But in the meantime, okay, let them try out what they want to do and we see. And mainly uh, people are respectful, but they naturally cannot know what you have planned and what you think things should happen. So I get more, how can you say, more um, forgiving in some way. Uh, it's not really to forgive these things, but more relaxed about things. Not so, not so keen on holding on. That's for sure I have uh, learned. And also to, to be more in the present and trust in the future that I will find and we will find a way to, to cope with the situation, which is, uh, you know, for me, it's really unexpected. And when you think about what is happening in the world, it's, it's horrible, in my opinion. And with the, um, with the knowledge which I have gained in the meantime, it's, in German, you would say it's kein Pappenstiel. Uh, it, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's very serious, I would say. Not because there is any virus or something. That's, that's not the problem. The problem is on, on different areas, in my opinion. And that uh, is bothering me, but I know we have to go through that. We are talking about the Great Awakening. I have a good book, I think I told you about that, LSD and the Mind of the Universe, and one of the sessions is The Great Awakening. And I, by chance, by chance, you know, I reread exactly this, uh, I opened the, the audio book and it was exactly on this session and I re-listened to it and I thought, oh, when I listened to it a year ago, it was different. And this year I say, okay, that's what's going on. And it's not nice, but it's also very hopeful on the other side. So both of it. And yeah, that's what, what has changed. And to be more calm. A year ago, when I understood what we are going towards, I really was so much bothered. And it took my, I was completely out of, I just, how can that be? I was desperate. And now I'm seeing the most horrible things. By the way, the, the book, uh, The Real Anthony Fauci, The Real Face of Antino Fauci, I recommend you to read this. It's, it's, you know, I could say only it's worse than you ever would think, but I can read it now with more calmness. I say, okay, that's it, that's it, uh-huh. And I don't have to, to get into emotional overwhelm anymore but it took me a year <laughs> so that has changed for me can you give the title into the chat of the book thank you <clears throat> anybody else uh, changed i wanted to ask you if that question was for everyone um yes i actually i went into that Deflow training to say, I want to be unrecognizable. I want to come out and, and yeah, step by step, I, I feel uh, there's not so much on the outside, um, but more like, um, being able to stand in the fire and say no, mm -hmm. or um, like this compassionate no. No. <laughs> you, you don't poop in my, my front yard. Um, yeah, things like that, or to, to feel protected like my natural shield and um, yeah letting go of um, I need to there is no duty to change anybody but myself so so they they 
I think a part of me is like hopeful, wishful thinking that if I try enough, if I'm <laughs> open enough, if I'm connected enough, I can change other people that they might see something or so. And it just it's not resignation. It's it's just um, yeah, and to, to to land more in my in in myself. In yeah, just to come home more. And and I think coaching is always if you do it right, it's always kind of you don't know what comes out of your mouth <laughs> when you speak uh, but we had um, Mondo Zen training within the, the voice law training and this was like feeling coming home um, coming from I don't know or not knowing I don't know it it's more specific but really from that space um, yeah even if it's hard on the outside to, to be there and, and come from that space from that place yeah so yeah and transforming a lot of old stuff that happened Nelly, you were nodding as well. Did you change? Yes. <laughs> yes, definitely. I've also there was so there were so many different shifts in inside of me that uh, I sometimes or still have to look at myself, who are you right now? And <laughs> and it's sometimes humorous and other times it's very interesting because we're going to be practicing to to uh, climb Kilimanjaro and it came very spontaneously and we've been hiking every week like long hikes river hikes mountain hikes um, but in that process it was also walking like that in nature and sometimes very rough like really climbing a little mountain and um, or going over very muddy parts when it rained so much uh, was very interesting because it was my connection to the earth that I felt really changed as well. But also always looking up to other people, it was like, I don't have to do that anymore. I'm just, it must just be me. And I think it's part of, you know, of our journeys to, to just come back to our own wholeness. It, 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 it really changed, shifts at something for me. I don't have to do so much anymore. I used to do so much, like this and this and this and that and this and that. And now there's complete peace. So there's a lot more balance that I must just be me and do what I enjoy. And, and the feeling part, the being part has really this year also, the, especially in the last part of the year has really settled down of just being. And the doing part will happen. And also living... The other thing that's a big change for me personally is stepping out of a, a causational world into a synchronistic world to live my life in flow of synchronicity. And that transformed a lot as well in, my own, in myself, in my inner journey. And also stepping out into the world and sharing my gifts of inner, inner sensing rather than outer sensing was a big shift for me personally to show up as that in situations where I usually wouldn't, um, I wouldn't say anything. I'll be present, but I wouldn't say anything. So that's a big shift as well of just going and to realize that in terms of manifestation, actualization, it's almost 70% inner work then and 30% physical work. And that was also a huge shift for me to feel it in my body more than anything else. So yes, definitely sometimes stop pinching. Who are you? Who is this new person stepping out here into the world?
Hanali, could you repeat that one more time? What you said about the 70% and the 30%? I just want to take it in a little bit more thoroughly. That from in from a manifestation and actualization perspective in the physical, 70% of its inner work. And when I say inner work, is the unseen, the, um, the inner self, the inner voice, the inner vision, and 30% is the physical work in the physical world. And they, they, at some stage for me, there is, a, there is a balance in it, but the initial part of it is more the inner work, is more important than, than in, the, than in the physical work where we come from, it's the other, you know, people is doing, 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 I must do this and I must do that and I must create this and I must do that. Um, and you forget that, that, that it's in the unseen, it's already there, it's bringing it in, but is that connection to it in the unseen into the quantum field that is, that is for a lot of us still new because we don't, doesn't, we don't come out of a world like that. And to then to start to use our inner senses to, to feel that and to sense that and something that we cannot define in words and there are a lot of people who always try to give it, you know, to give it a definition. What is, what does it mean? But it's an experience rather than, a, you know, a, a under, even a cognitive understanding. It's more a feeling and a sensing of just knowing. It's the inner knowing. It's not, an, it's not um, something I learned from a book, for example, or something like that, or somebody, somebody else said. It's a really deeply personal experience of us being in the world present here in this body. And through that process, bringing that whatever our intention is into the physicality. Where before we, we've been conditioned to do all this stuff all the time. And sometimes we lose the path because we do so much and we don't come back to that being part and that inner senses part. Does that help? Yeah, that's wonderful. Thank you. Actually, it's interesting because I, I um, the reason I was late uh, coming into this meeting this morning is that. Um, I went to mass at the local church that um, my um, dear friend uh, who he's retired now, but he celebrated the mass. It's his 53rd anniversary since he was ordained as a priest. He's almost 80 years old. And today in his homily, he spoke, he said almost exactly what you said, Hanali, except the language was of course the language of faith but it was the same message that he was, um, because the reading in the gospel was of course the familiar one of the angel coming to the Annunciation, the angel coming to Mary. And he was saying how um, the important thing is the, the trust, the inner trust that we all need to have in order to say yes. And the whole idea of incarnation is this idea of something, um, of something becoming from the inner sense of trust and faith in the future, what's going to happen. So it was kind of like an image of, um, it was what, I mean, to me, it's what you just said. That's why I wanted you to repeat it. It's kind of the same idea in different language, but um, the same concept of how the inner work is, is what counts, is this, this preparation and this, um, the trust that what is going to happen is, is the right thing that you're, you know, that you're, um, sort of trusting your future. So um, I love that synchronicity. It's, it's really beautiful. So what about you, Victoria? What has changed for you? I mean, did, did you change and in what way? Oh, I thought that got me off the hook. If Gertrud, if Gertrud needs to leave soon, maybe you, maybe you want to speak first, Gertrud. I already did. Well, we've all spoken to some. <laughs> Do you have any parting words? <laughs> no, we've all I mean is, uh, I answered uh, Monia's question. If I changed. Oh. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and and I would. Just like to know if we go another round or what we are going to do now at the top of the hour. <laughs> yeah, you can also already do a checkout if you want. We still have Beatrice and Victoria with a question, what did change 
uh, in what way did they change uh, in the last year? Okay. I would like to listen to that and then start the closing round. And, yeah. and okay. Stop dodging, answer the question. I'll go after you. Are you talking to me? Um, <laughs> in what way have I changed? Um, well, I, th I think I think the biggest change for me has been to, um, I mean, it's still a work in progress, but to um, apropos of this idea of trusting is, is this sense of, um, letting go the vs is das recht which is um my late husband's grandmother's spruch um a, a sense of um and i think my my study of buddhism has helped a lot with that this this um this kind of sense of the of accepting the impermanence of things that everything is everything is passing i mean it's of course, I've always known that and everybody knows that, but it's that's, I think I've deepened in this, um, in this acceptance of that. So it's no longer just a, an intellectual knowledge. Oh yes, everything's passing, you know, and, and um, but, but more the sense that what is important is, um, is, you know, is, is the moment. And, and that's why what I said at the beginning of how this year has been for me, um, this tremendous appreciation of, of all of the little joys of life, the unexpected joys that come moment by moment and learning to live with that because um, I, think, I think for me, this isolation has helped to make me focus on what's really important in life because so much of like Hanali was saying this running around and doing a million things and and defining oneself by how much activity to to move into a interior space more and um and realize what really counts and how um tiny little things can make such such a difference you know the I mean, just being with you, I mean, when well, this it's not tiny to be with you, but, but I mean, that that's, um, there, there can be joy, you know, like what you've said, Heidi, I find so moving, you know, your stories, every time we've met also in the um, Tuesday meetings, when you've talked about your experiences with the children, to me, that's such a, it's such a beautiful thing just to, to sort of participate in that vicariously by hearing you tell about it, that, um, and, and I think that's the key, seeing, seeing the world with the eyes of a child, the miracles and the wonders and the newness and all of the things that, um, that I think we took for granted before the world kind of you know, shut down and became smaller in a certain way. Because at the same time, by focusing on those things, you know, just the fact that we're together, the world has become infinitely larger <laughs> at the same time. All right, Beatrice, your turn. <laughs> um, hmm. I think, I don't know, last year I was saying something about wanting the word for this year to be more grounded. And I think as unstable as things often seem that that has actually been starting to happen. And I think going back to Austria also was a finding those roots. Um, I think how I've changed is I'm discover. It's still also a work in progress, but discovering, discovering my worth and what I have to offer, and and how how to stand firm in that. And if people aren't respecting that, then you know walk away. Um, and yeah. And I think I'm also discovering what I what I value that I it's actually I think I, I was really obsessed <laughs> for a lot of the year and also last year kind of trying to figure out a very concrete what is my future what is my future career da da da, da you know this kind of perfectionistic perspective and this year has been much more about discovering what 
what kind of work do I want to be doing? How do I want to impact others and affect others? And, and the, the specifics of what that job is are mattering less and less to me. And the impact and the quality are mattering more to me, which is an interesting, not a direction I thought I would go, but it's, it's, yeah, I think I'm much more open to the possibilities of what might come across my path because I'm not trying to hold on too tightly to any specific idea, but rather uncovering what's behind the act, the job you're doing or what's behind the relationship or the task you're undertaking that what's the deeper layer there and is it something valuable and worth putting energy and time into or not. Um, yeah, I guess I'm just, <laughs> I guess grounded is the word as much as, as much as it's felt panicky at moments and <laughs> emotional, I think there's, there's a sense of everything's okay. Everything's going to be okay. And, and everything is a lesson and everything has its place. I don't know. Yeah. I'm sure there's more there, but that's what I can come up with at the moment. For me, and it sounds you? like... Um, Monia, I don't, I'm curious about Monia. <laughs> uh, in what respect? <laughs> <laughs> How did you, change, did you change this year? You asked the question. Um, well, let's put it this way. I Because you mentioned the 70% inner work and I usually just identified with doing something. Being a translator, you translate and you do something. And, and I'm used to writing and, and now all of a sudden, it's enough to sit there and be. And that's quite new to me. Um, and I find it very satisfying to, yeah, to just be. And of course, I still do quite a few things, but mostly I find myself sitting in my recliner and being. And yeah. And uh, now that you mentioned that, so maybe some 30% will manifest sometimes. But right now, I'm just doing the inner work. So you have given me again the vocabulary I have I have not been looking for, but now I'm glad I found it. <laughs> yeah, that's my checkout. Um, yeah, okay. So we are in the round of checkout, Gertraud, you want? Yep. When I listen to Beatrice, it was like more trusting the outcome and not uh, interfering with the universe, how to do it exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. Thank you. It's been a full year also here in this room. And I'm very, very grateful for, for our encounters. And um, yeah, I wish everyone of you a wonderful season i i could say christmas i think to everybody it's it's okay so <laughs> yeah happy christmas and and uh new beginnings and um yeah thank you very much for sharing what happened for you this like in a a uh, short version what happened through the year so we witnessed it but it was also nice to, to have that condensed version and um, yeah and also the ones that couldn't attend today so the the very best wishes for so we see each other again next year and so when will that be it's do we have a, it's in two, two weeks or in four weeks or, oh. <laughs> I think in two weeks, I'm looking the calendar and, and have a look. 
Okay. Just give over to the next person and I will tell you. <laughs> okay. So everybody, take care and uh, hope to see you again healthy. Third of January. And so in two weeks. Next year, it's next year, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> so we don't have a break. We just go on. A continuation. And and I I just want to to put in the air that this person I was talking about is not only still around next year, this time, but really getting gotten better so much that we can say okay towards health um, why not say healthy <laughs> just that evaporated yeah and i can finally see my niece for the first time before she's two and um yeah that what we started this year is really having a good good way to continue next year so the, the with the firm and the course and yeah and me being unrecognizable in the in the world in a way that I couldn't imagine before coming from not knowing apologize to apologies to to drop out right now because there are some people waiting for me okay take care bye bye Who else is taking a check out round? I will. I'm here with you. I'm just feeling a very interesting movement in my core. And it's and also in my in the back of my head at the top of my spine. And it's it's a sense of there's really some new life in whatever way it's busy sprouting, coming forth. But it's just a continuation of a process that really started a long time, but I feel just that it's something that I wanted to share with you as a check out that regardless of what's been happening in our lives and in the world, there is something so extraordinary busy birthing and us coming together like this is always a sense of being the womb for it in some way as well. So thank you for being the co-wounders, <laughs> wombers, not wounders, <laughs> of creating such beautiful spaces in the world and which I always treasure and wishing you all also a wonderful festive season with your loved ones and wherever you are with in whatever way you celebrate um, the new year coming and yeah, that that movement is still there so there's definitely life coming and for me that's always very very inspiring moment to feel that that, that that's coming there's so this excitement now suddenly building up since i've been with you these few when these few moments here together thank you for that and um yeah, enjoy this time i'll pass on to beatrice I can't believe the year is done. <laughs> it's really wild to me. It's I often still think it's 2020. I think everything has been so led together. Um, but yeah, I'm very. I <laughs> this is this room. This room, virtual room, is one of the constants in my life as many things change. And I'm so grateful for it. And I, yeah, I can't imagine 
going <laughs> going at two weeks without it. <laughs> um, it's been really beautiful to to get to know all of you and to continue to co-create space. I don't even know when I joined originally, but it was definitely before the beginning of this year. So it's been over a year and it's been wonderful. Um, yeah, I hope I hope that everyone, I know that I'm going to take the next couple of weeks to really rest and try to internalize and process and percolate <laughs> on everything that's happened in the last year. And I hope others can do the same. And I'm very excited to, um, my mother is threatening that <laughs> her time will be full of activities. <laughs> <laughs> she just messaged me. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, but I'm I'm excited to next session. I'd love to to do talk about what we envision for the new year and what what how we take what we've learned this year and how we've changed this year into new pathways. So I look forward to that. And in the meantime, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, all those things. Much love. Passing to my mother. Yeah, I messaged Beatrice. That's what you think when she said she was going to rest. <laughs> um, even now, as we speak, her room is being prepared for her. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, to me, this meeting today was really special because it was so synchronistic with what, um, as I said, with what I heard this morning and what I've been thinking about anyway that, um, and also the, the weekend retreat that I was on for the winter solstice, uh, we talked a lot about the, um, the darkness, um, the fertility that, and the possibility that's, that's enclosed in the darkness and how, um, how the new life comes out of the darkness and life and light come out of darkness and, um, so once again, Hanalee, you've <laughs> said very beautifully what, um, what I was going to say. Uh, and I think that's, it's interesting because usually I go into this, you know, the sort of the depth of winter feeling kind of um, depleted and um, it's, it's hard to find energy to do things, but, but I think in the, I'm feeling a certain amount of um, energy coming this time because the the darkness is is it's a different kind. It feels like a different kind of a kind a different kind of solstice than usual somehow because I think because there are so many changes and um, and in a certain way yeah like Beatrice said you know this is this the continuity of this group has meant a great deal to me. And I feel above all the, the possibility, like we are, we're almost like the, um, like the, the fates <laughs> spinning <laughs> um, that, uh, you know, and I think it's so appropriate that the fates are women and, um, and, and also this image of the Virgin Mary and um, the whole idea of the womb and life coming out of the womb that it's, um, that we together and individually, we, we can produce the future. We can create the future. We, we, can, um, we can nurture it within ourselves and then give birth to infinite possibilities. So it, that's very exciting. Um, and I think that's, that's how I'm going into the new year. And then when we meet again, I can tell you if, <laughs> if I still feel that way. Um, so Monia, I pass to you. Well, I already checked out, but I still wish you a Merry Christmas <laughs> and yeah, a relaxed passing over into the new year, which is just a concept. It's just, yeah, yeah. it's always the now. So welcome to the now. <laughs> And I um, agree, and I'm ever more aware of it, that we can co-create the future and that we are called to do it. So far, 
until let's say last year, I thought, yeah, we could, uh, maybe, maybe not, and so on. And, and now I'm ever more trustful and even the energetic work can, um, you know, and your own work in yourself can have a ripples on, on, the, on the external work. Oh, by the way, it's another book from Erwin Laszlo about the Akashic field. It's, it's just uh, came out, I haven't read it yet, but it's, it's very new. And I think it just goes into this direction. Whatever you give into the field has um, the possibility to, to work on it. And doing it together is a completely different quality for me because alone, I, I wouldn't be able to do it. On the other hand, now for the first time in many months, I will be completely alone to Christmas for a few days. And I'm wondering how that will be. And I will have... Um, the possibility to maybe go deeper into meditation and into calmness. Uh, I hope so, because at the moment it's everybody comes from everywhere. So many doors, one came in in this door, the other in this door, the other, and I will say, Heidi, how uh, can you blah, 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 Oof, you know, and now I will have completely silenced and I'm wondering how I will live that. And I hope that I can get into the spirit of Christmas. I was uh, very much against religion for most time of my life, but I have rediscovered, as I, Monia knows, thanks to Jordan Peterson. And um, I sort of getting ever a little nearer to, to, yeah, let's say religion, but not, not to what I had learned as a child, let's say in this way. So I will see how I will handle this Christmas, and I wish you a very good Christmas. I cannot under, uh, imagine, Hanili, how Christmas can be in the midst of summer. Also, you have, you say you have sort of winter there now, too. Maybe, uh, you know, changing everything. <laughs> so, we will see. And I hope you have a good time, everybody of you. Good gathering, you, Beatrice and Victoria. And... Yeah, everybody in their family and other situation. And bye bye. See you next year. See you next year. <laughs> bye. <laughs>